Hey everybody, I have just gotten to Rosie's. We are here for Teak Stock, the fall edition of 2023, and this looks like it's gonna be so much fun. She took me through, she's got amazing stuff and a cute shop and a great collection and a really neat little auction area. I will show you all of this stuff, but right now I have to do just a little unpacking and setup because daylight is short and I just got here and I'm going to be staying in this actually very nice little accommodation here. Okay, it's Friday morning and we have other vendors showing up. I drove all the way yesterday and set up figuring that uh, I'll get to shop the other vendors while they set up and we will start having customers probably in the afternoon. It's been a little rainy this morning and everybody's just getting started. My booth's mostly set up. I've got a few things to do and because of the rain, we've got a few things under cover still, but we'll get them out soon. These folks set up their table last night. They've got some really great pieces under there. Everybody over there is setting up tents and we are going to have a gathering. My booth got kind of big because of the rain I put up a second tent so I've got the canopy from the RV and that and when I get the other things undone we'll show you a little bit more later. My neighbors just started unpacking and it extends over here and there's going to be people all along the front of the Quonset hut. The Quonset hut is amazing inside. I can't wait to show you what's in there and Here's my friend Dawn from Minnesota. She's come down to shop and to show. So it's really exciting to see what all comes out. And yes, they even brought in a food truck because there is another barn full of backstock behind the Quonset hut. But the Quonset hut, I'm gonna show you a little preview. This is where the auction is gonna to be tomorrow and it's really set up and there's some really great stuff up for auction. Fun things in this auction and some beautiful things in this auction and a few things of mine in this auction. This should be a lot of fun. This is gonna happen on Saturday. I'll be doing appraisal fairs in here on Sunday. Look at this case full of beauties. And I love this 60s bar. This is actually where Heidi does all of her broadcasts too, in the other end of the building. And so she moved it from there to here for the auctioneer stand. It's going to be fun watching her do her pattern and see her in action. I've never actually seen her hold an auction before. Another table of great stuff. And some folks have already got their names on chairs, so... We're expecting a pretty good crowd. She's had more of a response than she did last time. And last time she had people all the way out into the outdoors. This is how I felt this morning when all of a sudden there were all sorts of people outside the RV and I was just barely waking up. Well, here I'm showing some secrets. Heidi always sits in front of this lovely rose background. And here's what it looks like minus the bar, which is the thing she uses as her stand but she's got her merchandise on one side and her auction set up in the middle and merchandise on the other side it's actually great how much room she has and how organized things are love this mid-century danish set here especially the rocker heidi was also kind enough to give me 10 spots in the auction and i have 10 items in here and a couple of them already have bids. The first day has actually been really eventful. This was really our slow, easy setup day while people came from far away and got ready to go. But we did have some customers and my gosh, I've sold three dozen items, I'm, I'm thrilled. And let me show you the setup because this is a rare chance for me to show you most of what I brought to a show at the beginning before it's all gone. Now, I won't belabor every piece. I will point out some highlights because if you folks want to see the haul video, uh, look for the video that says haul that came out a couple of weeks ago, and you'll see a lot of this stuff when I first got it. But I spent a lot of this afternoon putting out jewelry, and some is sold already. I've gotten several fresh new pieces of Coro. I got this, which I just really think is fun. It's a Matisse belt, actually Renoir. Matisse has the enameling, Renoir is without. I just got this very cute gal from my neighbor. Set of Coral Craft there, nice little compact with the lipstick in it. And then here's the jewelry case. It's a whole lot of little stuff, so I'll scan over it so you can look a little bit more closely. The crown is fun. I like the sterling slotted spoon. I always try to put my silver and gold in the case just because it's easier for security. And we expect to be busy, so I've got to have it so that I don't have to stare at everything. I can just lock the case and then help people. Uh, the little owl here is one of these erstwhile, very similar to Leah Stein, done of various layers of acrylic, and they are 
from about 25 years ago. They're discontinued and they're very collectible now. These are apple juice bakelite, these big ear clips there. I brought a lot of fall colored jewelry because we are getting into fall. There's a nice coro sterling in the bimetal with the copper tone and the brass. I love these folding glasses. They fold down to a tiny little thing you could put in your purse and look at those rhinestones. They have a very strong prescription. A lot of blue butterfly wing jewelry. I have a few new pieces there. This little group in here is real gold. I do carry a little bit of real gold. I sell a lot of this at Springfield, Ohio, and that's where my next show after this is, so I brought it to this show. The portrait is something new that just came in. I like these pieces. The fox is Leah Stein from the 1980s or 90s of the acrylic. And these other pieces I think are just so fun with the faces. That dichroic glass, that's from sometime in the 1990s when dichroic glass became the big deal. I put the Napier pin in with the other really brightly colored Rivoli stones. And then I've got my case of other Renoir and Matisse here. And then I really tried to spread jewelry throughout the Fenton display. I put the check pieces up here on this nice Fenton banana boat. That one I hadn't shown you before. I did show you most of these other Fenton pieces. The head base is a new addition. That was based on Lana Turner actually before she shaved her eyebrows. Lots of spectacles. I do still have some wonderful vet pieces left, but a whole ton of the animals did sell today. That seemed to be the most popular thing so far, actually. And then coming around the front here, I did a little bit of seacoast type of display here and a couple of big Fenton milk glass pieces. I put the tiger out here and I think he's safe from getting stepped on under the table, but I wanted people to be able to see it because it's such a cool thing, that 70s, 80s wall plaque mirror. I finally uncovered these. These are a lot of the character dolls and there's a few rubber face and a few plushes that are left. I feel like I have a few more somewhere. This is all paper stuff and we are having sprinkles still and could have some dew point over the night. So I'm keeping this covered for the most part, but all of those are airline card decks. All of these are postcards. These things I'm knocking over are Matchbox and Corgi toys. The olive oil plane is actually pretty good. I think that sells for up to $35 online now. I've got a bunch of die cast cars in here. I sold a few today. And a combination of Viewmasters, which I'll take out, and a whole bunch of pins. I've got more pin backs, actually. I've got quite a few, and more than I could put out. And there is Mr. Dukakis from the 1988 election. There's a bush doll that he fights with that I do not have. The Berwyn typewriter you saw me get in the Midwest I brought here. And we've got the Goofy puzzle. I brought a few Disney things, some more die cast up here, a whole box full of buckles I added to the knives. Uh, so there's just a lot of fun little things. A few things in here that are a little, well, mm, packages that used to hold little devices that keep men from becoming fathers. We'll just leave it at that. Back here, I did most of my kitchen stuff on one table. I know I showed you some of this, so I won't go into great detail, but here's all the thermoses out of the box, minus the gun smoke, because that one sold right away. And lunch boxes, some kitchen stuff. This yellow set here is Fenton. This is one set I didn't show and everybody keeps asking about it and are really surprised that it's Fenton and it's funny because I'm around a bunch of Fenton collectors and they haven't seen it. So that was fun and interesting to me. A couple of Pixies, some McCoy. The Blendo set is nice when it's all together in one place. Tins and coffee mugs. I've got a collector who's interested in the coffee mugs that I need to reach out to online. So I set them down on the ground so that I can remember to film them for them. Louisville stoneware with the cats on the side. I'm not sure I showed that. And this is the compare casserole that I got in Mexico. It's the first time I've had it out other than one show in Florida. I've got a lamp covered under here so the shade doesn't get wet. And there's a Darth Vader talking phone under there that we can lift the top and show you. There he is. And then this is my sort of Western display. I have sold some off of here already today. I've actually been pleasantly surprised. This was not just a glass crowd. I have sold all sorts of different merchandise today. And that's great news because we've got two more days and tomorrow especially should be our busiest. And Sunday too, they say, is pretty good. And I'll be doing appraisal fairs here on Sunday. So we'll put this little 
This is one of the Fire King mugs. You notice in that other shot I had a bunch of the Jadeite. Well, this is the Davy Crockett mug. A little eye bath. I brought a few of the eye baths. I like that yellow color. Moccasins, Azoro Thermos. So we do have some things that haven't been out. The statue here that's signed, I did show that in the haul video, but I didn't show all of these other Star Wars pieces because I didn't have access to them. This is a funny thing, a child's rosary. Father Peyton offers the mysteries of the rosary in color and three dimension. And apparently this fellow was on television and this is a viewer where you can see all about the rosary. And so these are a novelty that a lot of Catholic kids got in the 19, late 50s and early 60s. The baseball is signed by Rob Carew. I believe he was a Minnesota twin amongst other things. And then Lenny Wilkins, the famous basketball player and coach is the signature on that piece. So I did try to bring a variety of stuff. It's not all just glass and pretty things. There's things for all sorts of different collectors. And we've got a bunch of metal stuff down on the bottom there, including the doorstop cat, which is really fun. I sold one of the brass elephants earlier today, some hardware pieces. So I think we have an interesting display, but I also think I'm gonna have to be doing a little shopping while I'm here because I have actually sold $1,000 worth of stuff already. And so I am going to need to look around. So let's look around together because we've got some people who are still just setting up. Some people are done for the day and covered up. And of course, we'll all be out tomorrow, but then we'll be busy and I might not get to film. So let's see what's going on now. My friends here have all sorts of, uh, did they call this peach crest with the pink edge? I always get that one confused. Uh, what was she calling a peach or pink? She was saying peach. Peach, yeah, I thought so. I thought it was the peach crust. The pink is a solid. The pink is a solid Barbie pink and not clear. Thank you. That's the difference. I was wondering about that. It's so nice being around a bunch of knowledgeable people because they can keep us straight on all of this stuff. And they brought the glowing lamp in the middle there. That is so cool. If you had a black light in that, it would just be fluorescent green and some other lamps. They have some jewelry too, actually. And they've got some pretty cool pieces. I like this set here, the pierced. And, um, oh, this is nice. And this one is a sterling set with little purple amethyst glass stones. That's very pretty. I think these are rather exotic. I have a pin that sort of matches those, but I have to admit, I like the colors of hers better. One person... Just no arguing with yourself, okay? Oh, you know, if you talk to yourself, you're guaranteed an intelligent conversation. Uh, oh yeah. And if you argue with yourself, you're guaranteed too. <laughs> These postcards are really fun. We looked at some on the live channel. You can see that, that were women in crescent moons, but there are all sorts of fun ones from the golden age of postcards. These are comic. Uh, more comic here. It looks like they have a lot of those. And then these are lovely women. The society up here is out of sight. Leap year. Leap year postcards are collectible because of course there were only a couple of leap years in the golden era of postcards and leap year day is something that was celebrated more widely then because that was the one day of the year it was considered seemly for a lady to ask a man out and this guy well he's got a couple of women literally fighting over him tearing him limb from limb hello are you there what a great phone and this dapper person has rung you up to say that they're wishing you good cheer interestingly enough when the phone was first invented you didn't say oh hello you said ahoy that passed on pretty quickly the almighty dollar and how to get rid of it I'm not sure who's getting rid of whose, but someone is very expensive in this relationship. These folks are just getting started. They have a whole lot of blankets and linen, so that should be interesting. And there are things at the show other than antiques and vintage. Uh, there are some boutique items, but it is mainly antique and vintage. And that's mainly what I'm looking for, of course. I like this. It's got an interesting design and it's got a signature for Celebrity New York. Not a bad brand. Some of these folks are just selling leftovers of what they have and their prices are really cheap. Some of these folks are dealers like me and our prices are regular. Uh, so there are there have been some resellers here and they had some fun. Only $4 on this, that's Lockport, New York. Only $8 on the little pine cone bowl here. You know, I know these aren't really, really super rare pieces, but the prices are great. The blue Blanco Twin Spout is only 25 and that's a good price on that these days. And next to it is a really neat piece of pattern glass. 
This one has the navy pattern with the horseshoe around the anchor. And this was popular around 1898 when you were sending your sailor off to the Spanish-American War. This was a bit of a remembrance. It's a nice piece and $20 is a really inexpensive price. Now, I made a mistake in a video previously and I'm going to try to do a short about it to fix it because someone from the Pattern Glass Society uh, sent me an email and said, please be careful about what you're saying. I said something was flint glass and it was actually uh, soda glass because it didn't ring like a bell. So I will try to do a demonstration where you can see the difference. He sent me some good information and hopefully I'll be able to do a compare and contrast for you with that when I get time. I do like to try to correct my mistakes and if you're looking for those corrections sometimes they end up on our shorts channel. So if you're not a subscriber to the Antique Nomad shorts you might take a look at that because that's where we do a lot of announcements about shows and places that we're going and uh, events and things that are more transitory and it's a great way to keep up with us. Well here we go. We knew we were going to start seeing some Halloween stuff because fall is here and the color scheme in general on this is pretty neat. I, I know we're looking at all sorts of very pretty like the cherry and cable. I believe that's cherry and cable. But I really like this piece. It's a really interestingly sewn multi-layer uh, runner and I would say the way that's done it's probably 1930s from the colors. It's very cool. This one's interesting because it's for the old Elks Lodges, only $8. I know someone who owns an Elks Lodge, the, the one I started in the antique business in, which has now been turned back into a hotel. Maybe he'd like that. $65 for the set on the Jadeite. I have a little Jadeite here as well. Only $25 and $30 on the trunk vases. Those seem like good prices. I really like the red and white transfer wear. This is very handsome and such a very pretty pattern. This is a large turkey platter. It is the Canova pattern and T. Meyer from Longsport in England started that particular wear. One of the many Staffordshire transfer wear makers of the Victorian era but it's a beautiful pattern and a lot of people really like the red and white. Some people decorate with it year-round. Some people just use it at holidays. Next to it, this looks like it might be an Anne Marie Davidson, but it's a little lightweight and not quite the quality. It's actually a Bovano. They made some really neat stuff too, though. I have some good Bovano enamel pieces myself, and I do think that's cute. It's definitely of the era. Part of the fun of all of this is that Heidi is doing live streams and bringing in various people who are here selling so that they can talk a little bit about some of the stuff that they brought. This is Don Curtis, and she and her husband have come down from Minnesota. They are setting up at a show for the first time. It's really neat. We have a bunch of folks who are setting up for the first time. And by the way, look at that row of swung bases. Uh, ivory and whalebone. Oh yeah, it does have that look. <laughs> and then you're turning it around and you know, it's a different... It's a soapstone, but it does actually, they are intentionally trying to make it look like yeah. carved whalebone. And uh, yeah. it's an interesting piece. This sculpture it turns is. out to be somebody and ooh, it's really heavy. I it's forget. It's really heavy, yeah. But yeah, Del Warner, as soon as I showed this, I just got it and yeah. I got it from an estate oh, and, and then... I knew it was something, but somebody was like, oh yeah, that's a yeah, look listed there, artist. On this side, there's another face. That's what I think is so great. Every way you turn it, it's interesting yeah. and it's a different yeah. figure. But like I said, it's a, oh my God, this needs to be in a museum. Well, it is expanding. We've got another, hello. <laughs> She's getting started packing and Dawn is set up here and their neighbor is set up. So we'll take a little quick look at some of the things that they brought. Another vendor here. We've got more people filling in. So it's it's actually going to be a nice little show. There's going to be a bunch of stuff here to see. I always love the ultramarine swirl. Only $10. Yes, yeah, some of these prices are going to be really good because some of these folks are bringing it because it's their extra stuff. Not because they're dealers, but because they're collectors and their collections have advanced or upgraded or outgrown them. I really like this airplane and now it's on my bucket list because this was the plane that at the Louisville flea market I put it in the pile and the guy insisted it was from World War II and worth $300 and that he wanted $300 for the pile and then I said well it's not really from World War II so how about if we take that and he said well I still want $300 and that's when I got mad and you probably saw that video. It's signed by a fellow named DeMott. 
And Demotte is not as famous and valuable as a Jure piece, but it is a name that we see a lot. I'm going to be curious to see how they price it. I have a feeling it's not going to be $300, and maybe I will get to own it. Ooh, that's really pretty. Oh, I like this a lot. Especially that two-toning. Yeah, I think you're Bohemian. Check, yeah, Bohemian. I think you're right about that, yeah. Someone just like that with that guy's name. Oh, Yosef uh, Hospoka. Okay, well, that might be, actually. I, I don't know that piece, but I do agree with you. It's not Chalet because the they form their baskets differently, and Bohemia is where you see that other... And then, do you know who made this set? I love these 50 sets this like this. Hetty Shoop. There you go. I see it on the California bottom. Pottery. Fantastic. Yes, California pottery. She was really interesting because she, uh, she uh, came over from Austria in the 30s, and she got involved with her own pottery company, and it was a huge hit for a long time. Um, very popular. Very popular with collectors, too. And I just love the flatness of it, and yet they're tall, and they've got grace, and... I love comedy and tragedy masks. Yeah, yeah that, that's a fun set. There's this beautiful Fostoria heirloom set. I love that yellow color. Yeah, you've, you've got some neat stuff, actually. Boy, and this is the first time you've done this. I think your prices are great. I think you're going to sell stuff, and you're going to have a fun time. Oh, I hope so. I sure hope so. Well, I know we'll have a fun time oh, no yeah. matter what. It's just, yeah, what... It's just fun. It's it really fun is. Here. And how fun that your seven-year-old granddaughter is into this. And yes. I am really encouraged that people are getting their kids and grandkids oh. to appreciate this stuff again. Because it seemed like we almost lost a generation where everything had to be new. And now I think they're beginning to realize that, you know... Uh, new is very crisp and clean and precise, and there's sort of a homey, warm feeling that we've lost, and I think younger people are seeing that in old stuff, so... And you have some cute things, actually. I always That's love these wall pockets. Oh, I like this. Isn't that so cute? That is really cute coming out of the egg. Oh, yeah, that's very fun. Yep, that's a three-piece set. I, I, I group together as much as possible. I should introduce you. This is this is Deb, Discount Deb is what she goes by. And you are on Facebook, correct? I am. Deb's Discount Deals. That's great. Deb's Discount Deals on Facebook. And she does lots of mystery bags. And I know a lot of you folks really enjoy that. She was just shopping in my space for a couple of things that are going to go into some mystery bags. Yes, my McDonald's memorabilia bag and my cabbage pad. Cool. The nightlight, yes. And so, yeah, she's got some really fun stuff, including something I really like that I am seeing in the middle of the table because I just always have been really fond of these. And that is the little patio light here. Isn't that so cute? Yes, I really like that piece a lot. Yeah, that's Viking glass. And you don't see it in crackle all that often. They did a lot of crackle, but not so much when they were doing this color. So that's a little more unusual. Um, what is your price on that? Five. Oh, my gosh. Well, it's mine. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, this is fun. Oh, yes, she has Bukon, uh, just like I do, from Scotland with the thistles. I have the little trivet, and she noticed it in the booth and said, wow, I've got the mugs, and they're actually very cute, too. Yeah, you've, you've got a lot of neat stuff. This is going to be a fun weekend. Oh, and you have the Florette snack set in the I box. Got three of them. I got those two, and there's another of just milk glass down there that I haven't even had space yet to put up. Well, you can see the way she's using it on this one. And in the early 60s, the notion was you're going to have parties, and people need something with a handle that they can put their coffee cup on and walk around because you're going to have so many people in your house. Well, not many people have parties that big anymore, so these snack sets have kind of gone begging, but some of them are really cool and some of them are in collectible patterns like anchors florette uh, this is a pattern we typically see in this part of the country and down into kentucky that we really don't see in a lot of other parts of the country and so it's cool that you've got the whole set oh those are sooner glass from oklahoma and the great cobalt color you don't see the cobalt very often with that yeah this is a real old one isn't it Wow, how cool. I like that it's actually square. It looks like it's in great shape. Did you restore it? Um, the couple we bought it from. From actually. did it? Oh, how neat. So this is Lynn of Halen Vintage, and she has some really cool, fun things here. They brought a little bit this uh, weekend. They've been helping with the auction, too. Now, I understand you have a YouTube channel. I do. And tell me a little bit about what it is. Is it Halen Vintage on YouTube? Yes, Halen Vintage YouTube, Instagram. Um, eBay, everywhere. Macari, all. Halen Vintage. And you left the uh, regular world to become a full-time reseller recently, didn't did. you? Like, yeah, it's been about two years that I got laid off and just, I was kind of doing this part-time and it's been a lot of fun. Oh, I bet. That's so great. And it's fun to find out that you can make it on your own without uh, having to worry so much about layoffs and things like that, isn't it? Yeah, it, yeah, it was. It's been, it's 
but it's always the thrill of the hunt. Absolutely. When you find something that is just like, you yeah. can just feel it and you, you're like scurrying out. Oh, it somewhere. gets in your bones. And I know we were talking yesterday, you were finding some really good stuff, actually. Yeah. You said you've had some big success on eBay. What's the most expensive thing you've sold? Um, Lagerburger baskets. I just did a video on it. Oh, uh, cool. Yeah, see? Baskets. And isn't that smart? Because a lot of people are thinking, well, those aren't really very old. But uh, you said you found some Halloween ones. Yeah, they were from 2013 and they were signed and they were like a wicked witch hat. Mm -hmm. I bought them thinking I would make like maybe 50 bucks a basket on them and turned out to be like close to 300. I wow, think. how exciting. And was it a particular color scheme that was different about them? They just had the witch's hat and it's so close to Halloween. I and, thought, oh, I could probably get 50 bucks. And you hit the timing just yes, right with the right yes. thing. Well, you have some other fun things here too. And I think your prices are really good. I like the uh, tray here because it's got the original box. I've never seen one in the original box before. And I think it has this original Kmart sticker on it. Oh, does it have the original yeah. price tag on it? Yes. I think it might. There it is. There it is. Key Kmart. one, $6.54. <laughs> and what's our price today? I think it was 10 I might have. 10? Wow. Yeah. See, I mean, if you take into account inflation, that's a bargain. I think I might have to have that. And uh, you have a bunch of other fun stuff. I love the rubber face guy here, but I also really am partial to this. This is Red Wing, and it's the Pepe pattern, right? Correct. And I actually seen a video with you on this, and that was one of the reasons why I brought it, because I knew it was one of your favorite patterns. Oh, that's so cool. I just <laughs> love it. It's this fun modernism, and it's the repeating. The colors are neat. It's out of the late 60s. They quit making dinner around 1967, and I think this was one of their very last lines. And the modernists love it, but because it wasn't in the line log, you can't find it very easily. So good choice. And I see the tree of, um, I always call this tree of life because the cracked ice, I think it doesn't have the heavy uh, yeah. lines like this. Yes, and it's uranium. Oh, that'll glow. Yeah, oh, and with nice. that texture, that probably is a really interesting piece because it's not just a plain flat. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's a great set. How much is that? 45. 45. Gosh, that's reasonable these days for what it is. I have to say your prices are great. The original issue lava lamp, fifty dollars oh. in the blue, which is a hard yeah. color to find. And look at the pinholes on the bottom, so you know it's from the '60s. Usually, that blue fades out a lot, so this is in really good condition. They must have kept it in a dark place. You know, and I just I wanted to move it, so we're really like wanting to put a good price on it because it is a good price. It, yeah, yeah I've read a lot of things on shipping them, and I'm like a little bit leery on it. So. I understand if you don't have the original box with the way they packed it, you yeah. don't want that wax to move around because it can destroy the piece because the spring in the bottom just yes. floats and that's what heats up. And if it gets in the wrong spot, it can be a hassle. But wow, such a good deal. And she's almost near a thousand subscribers, folks. So you can put her over the top. 45 more. Oh, that's very exciting. Well, yes. I'll have to check you out and I'll subscribe to you. So 44 to go. Yes. And don't forget Retro Cooking Wednesdays. And you can also come to a live sale Tuesday night. Oh, so retro cooking, is that like you? I make sometimes jello salads. Sometimes I have my granddaughter with me. So we kind of like do find older recipes and we'll make them. We've done some weird ones, but we try and keep it a little bit simple or whatever. But if there's something you want to see made, send me an email. She made a bean salad. I'm not even a huge bean salad fan. It is so good. So I would say that if you like food, she is a somebody to watch for that too. It's really neat doing this with a group of people who get to stick around in the evening. I'm not used to doing too many shows. I have one other one like this where we all get to gather afterwards. And so we just had dinner. It's really nice getting to know people better. It's such a fun group. This is Heidi's shop. This is the front of the Quonset hut in this front room. She has turned into a shop. Now, her father-in-law, who originally had this property, this was his parts store for auto parts and they did a lot of cleaning. And so there's still a few parts cabinets and things in here. They had to get rid of a lot of stuff to get it down to this. Great row of swung bases, bittersweets. And I love the triangular one in the middle. That's Viking, I've always liked that. It's a little different than the swung bases. That's where they pulled on the three edges. She has so, much spectacular Fenton. I really don't even know where to start. She said it was okay if I filmed overall. I know you'll see some of these pieces in upcoming sales and things because this is her front room next to where she does her filming, but she's just got an amazing collection of things. And the little shop portion is very cute. 
I love the old Coca-Cola cooler. This is a neat little arts and crafts drop front secretary desk in oak. And then she's got a closet back here where lots of Fenton is. And I have to say, it's pretty well organized and arranged. If you watched our live broadcast earlier, I talked about the Blanco Rosé Daisy vase on the right there. She's got baskets. The green lotus mist on the right is a very hard one to find. Lots of cute little painted Rosaline pieces. Uh, she's She's got a really incredible collection of Fenton, actually. Love the dinette set in here, too. Mm -hmm. Then we go back into the middle section here. And this is where the storage is after we take a moment to enjoy this flamingo mirror. This is a different one. Hi, everybody. Good to see you. And by the way, if you're enjoying this video as much as I'm enjoying being here doing this event, please click thumbs up, leave a comment, let us know you're out there. It really helps us with YouTube and lets more people know about us so that they can join in with our fun antique and vintage community. Please join us in chat for premieres every Mondays and Wednesdays at 8 p.m. And you can check out our membership information in the membership line below the dash line in any of our descriptions of any video. So I'm just going to give you an idea of what a backstock section of an antique dealer's world can look like if they're lucky and they have big shelves. They also have some cool leftover things from the old days like a walnut shucker there. <laughs> That's pretty neat. These used to be all full of parts and now they're all full of antique and vintage merchandise waiting to be sold. I have the little teapot ring holder that is by the same company that made this piece. Oh no, actually this is a Joe St. Clair and mine is a Joe Rice, which is very similar. But I, I think there's a connection between those two and I'll have to find out what that is. This is Costa Boda. They made these for the steamship lines. This one's got a nice layer of dust, but they are collectible. They sell for about $12 to $15 a piece. Benton Christmas trees, anyone? A couple of pieces of Roseville. One of these I think is the Mastique line and the other one, shoot, I get them confused. I'd have to look in a book. They're from the 1910s. They have this sort of rough texture to them. And of course, because they're the earlier, they're not going to say Roseville on the bottom of them. There were other companies that made similar pieces as well. So it takes a little bit of scholarship to tell apart, but they're definitely that Arts and Crafts 1910s ceramic. Now here's the pink crest. This is the difference. See how this is a solid pink ribbon around the edge as opposed to the clear. That's the difference between pink crest and peach crest. The solid pink is harder to find. And here's this really fun vase. I believe Rainbow Glass, the subsidiary of Viking that did their hand-blown stuff, did this one. It's similar to Blanco pieces being made in the Joel Philip Myers era of the late 1960s. I think it's a great look. It does not have a stopper and was not meant to. It's not ground for one. This is called Aqua Crest, and it's funny because it kind of looks like Aqua Fresh toothpaste to me around the edge, but it's a great blue color. So many pretty blue opalescent glass patterns. Northwood, Jefferson, all sorts of companies made these around 1910. It gave a little bit of color as opposed to just the plain white opalescent. Here's a beaded drape pattern that we see fairly frequently. Some of these patterns are more obscure than others. We see prices typically in the $30 to $60 range on these, depending. One is your limit. Zeno and I like to watch a YouTube channel called Movie Bitches with these two young people that talk about movies, good and bad, and review them. And they always have a glass of wine and they always pour it into a giant Empoli snifter and sip it while they're having the show. I have to admit, I envy this box. All these little miniature flamingos are Japanese from the 1950s and 60s. It's kind of hard to find the miniatures, except in Heidi Land, because she bought a giant estate with a lot of interesting things, and this was one of the things in it. Pottery here, I see Weller, I see Hall, I see Francoma, I see, oh, just a bunch of different interesting things. She definitely has the merchandise. So you folks will have fun following her if you like shopping well. She's gonna bring lots of stuff to you. A bunch of these Victorian era baskets with the nubby handles where they look like twigs. And they actually do hurt your hands if you hold them by the handle, which is good because you really shouldn't pick them up by the handle anyway. The Fenton lime green custard glows very, very strongly under a black light and you really don't see it very often. This is a closer to a modernist design for Fenton from the 1960s, and it's when they first started using the oval label. You'll see the oval embossed stamp on pieces as early as 1964. 
although they didn't do it for every piece in the line until the mid-70s. They did keep a few of the tools from the old days when this was in fact an auto parts garage and a nice little assemblage here of some of the vintage things in honor of the father-in-law and i think that's really cool the gulf lubrication can by the way is worth some money anything gulf oil that's vintage is and i understand there's a great story behind the standard oil sign and i am going to hear about it because this is one of the things coming to the appraisal fair on sunday so i will be appraising this item it's one of the few things I get to see in advance. And then, if that was not enough, there is one more storage barn back here. And this one is where the unsorted stuff, the miscellaneous stuff, and a lot of bargain stuff goes. They're going to leave this open this weekend, and people are going to be welcome to come in here and just pick things out. This is a great piece here, actually. This is Cambridge Crown Tuscan. I like the shell pattern. I've always liked the compote. You've got to check these for condition. They had little nubs in here to hold the lid. So if you see these nubs and it doesn't have a lid, it's not an open bowl. It was meant to have a lid and you're missing the lid. And that's why, because it would hold this on here so that it wouldn't chip. That's a very cute little piece from about 1950. A couple of bagatelles or push em ups. American Sports on the right. That one's got a crack. The one on the left is in good shape though. State Fair. And they did, in fact, call this one a bagatelle, which is the original French word for them. I had one of these when I was a kid. This is a Kitty Riley Hummingbird. And what do you want to get for this one? How about 35? How about 35? Twenty-five. 
I got 20 over here. We go 25. Anybody with a 25? Anybody with a 25? 25. There we go 30. 30 down is 30. We go 35. 35. 35. 40. 40 down is 40. We go 45. I got 40 over here. We go 45. Anybody with a 45? Sold at 40 dollars. Jamie Sway. Glossy Rosaline. What do you want to get? We go 50. 50 dollars. 45 go. Is really cool, and she signed. Who signed her? Oh, uh, uh, G Smith. I thought she was awesome. I think you're all set with this one. Yeah. Okay, I think it's taking care of our absentee bits back there. Um, this is a Frank Coma. Now, I picked this one up because she's a nude. I've never seen a nude in, a, in Frank Coma, and I thought she was just really unusual. It looks to me like it's Ada Clay and it's early and he was known for nudes in the Art Deco period and then he quit making that because they were also rather religious and once that stopped being the style then he took it out of the line. Yeah. So they're really very hard to find. They're hard to find. All right, what do you want to give? We go 100. 100. Anybody with a 100? 100 there, we go 125. 125. Anybody want to go 125? 125 there, we want to go Somebody really had to, you know, this was a cherished piece for many, many years. I think it helps that they did those twig handles so you never wanted to pick it up. <laughs> I think you're exact. Those thorn handles, what do they call them? This one's not thorn. But, but they're sharp. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I think we're going to get started. How about 75? How about 75? 
flat yeah and also the picture it might bring this up rather or this down lower or yep can you, you do that to scott to hold done and you can you can be okay okay um so this looks like custard in the picture but it is actually lotus mist okay here we go what do you want to get we go 200 yeah. 200 200 there we go 250 250 we go 250 that took okay. me right we out yeah me too <laughs> It's so great to get to meet viewers in the real world. I am going to go back and finish getting my booth ready because tomorrow we should be very busy. I don't know whether we'll get to film again, but we are going to have live coverage of the appraisal fair on Sunday, so you will get to see some more of the event from here. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also, click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com, for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.